Okay, so evolution is an ever ongoing process, and one of its driving forces is predation. Predators can, by both indirect and direct effects, uh, affect the composition of the prey community as well as the prey size and their behavior. And uh, different predators hunt in different ways and thus affect the prey in different ways. One part of the evolution is ecotypic divergence. This means that a species divides into different variations that are adapted to different habitats. And uh, these variations are called ecotypes. And with time, if genetically, genetically uh, isolated, they can form new species. In Lake Token, the aquatic isopod, Acellus aquaticus, can be found as two different ecotypes. One is mainly found in the reed habitat, and the other one is found in more open water in the stonework stands. And these ecotypes differ from each other in size and color. And uh, previous studies also show that they differ in behavior, with the uh, one from the reed habitat being the more active ecotype. And in these habitats, there are different dominating predators. In the reed, you have invertebrate predators, here represented by a themselves fly larva. And these predators sit and wait for their prey. And the size of the prey that they are able to eat are decided by the predator's gape size, and thus a prey can outgrow their predator. In the stoneward stands, the most important predator are fish, and here they are represented by perch. And fish are active hunters. They use their sight to detect their prey and uh, to avoid predation the best way for prey is to be as invisible as possible. Now, the question is, is these predators the cause of the difference between the ecotypes? The aim of my study was to see uh, how the presence of invertebrate predators and fish affected the behavior in Acellus aquaticus and how the predation by these predators affected the size composition. In freshwater systems, um, a large part of the communications happen through chemical cues. Uh, these are molecules released into the water, and you can call them a scent. And everything releases these cues, and uh, the, including predators. And this makes it possible for the prey to detect the predators without even seeing them. To examine the effect of uh, on the behavior, uh, I use two different setups, and in these setups, I added cues uh, from either themselves fly larva or perch, and from here on, I will call them predator cues. So I put the isopod in an arena uh, where the bottom of it was covered with a grid with two times two centimeters. Uh, squares and these squares 
I use to determine the activity, um, as I measured it in number of times, they passed these lines. And they were observed for five minutes without any cues. And then cues were added and they had a bit of acclimatization time. And then they were observed for another five minutes. And here's the result of the first setup. You have activity on the y-axis. And the light blue bars are the activity without any cues, and the dark blue ones are activity with cues. And I only found one significant difference, and it was in uh, the stonework ecotype with the damsel fly cues, where the activity with, the cue, with cues uh, decreased. The second setup, uh, the arena was part of a larger container and uh, divided by a fine mesh net. Here there also was a grid on the bottom, the same type of grid, and activity was measured in the same way as previous setup. And they were observed for five minutes without any cues and then cues were added to the large part of the container and thanks to the fine mesh net we got the gradient into the arena and with a lower concentration of, of cues and you have the result here and um, in this setup, we had no significant difference whatsoever for any factor in any treatment. To examine the predator's effect on the, on the size, groups of isopods was uh, subjected to predation by perch in stonework substrate and reed substrate and by themselves fly lava in reed substrate and no substrate. The, the mean length in these, uh, each group consisted of a single ecotype and the mean length of uh, this group uh, was decided before and after the trials and compared to each other to see if there were any difference. And here you have the result for the perch predation with mean length in millimeters here uh, before and after the trial. And the light gray boxes are the stonework ecotype and the dark gray are the reed ecotype. And there was one res significant result would decrease in the mean length for the stonework ecotype in the reed subs in the stonework substrate. Uh, let's sum it up. Perch predation in stonework substrate had no effect on the stonework ecotype, but decreased the mean length in the reed ecotype and in the reed substrate there were no difference in the mean length and the results for the damsel fly predation we had a, I had a significant increase in the mean length for both ecotypes in the no substrate trials and for the stonework ecotype in the reed substrate. Let's add these data to the table. So, an increase in uh, the stonework ecotype in reed substrate and no effect on the reed ecotype. And an increase in both 
ecotypes where there were no substrate. And as you can see here, that one and that one, uh, the predators affect in their natural habitat, they affect the non-native ecotype uh, and driving it towards the size of the native ecotype. Let's go back to the question of uh, the aim of this thesis. So, do the predators affect the behavior? There was no clear difference uh, in the behavior, not between the ecotypes nor between the cues, not between, not with predator cues, nor without any predator cues. So it's hard to affect a behavior, a difference in behavior that isn't there. Did the predators affect the size? Yes, they did. And it's most likely that these predators do cause the size difference in the ecotypes. Well, my behavior study contradicts previous studies in the, of the behavior, but uh, the, these ecotypes evolve independently in different lakes. They can be found in different lakes and they evolve independently. And uh, previous studies have been done on the on uh, isopods from another lake. So it could be that there is a difference between lakes in the behavior and in other attributes as well. Uh, the size pattern with large individuals in the reed substrate and small in more open water is uh, not only limited to, the, to these isopods. It's a more general pattern. Uh, in the invertebrate uh, uh, community in aquatic system, uh, the large species are most abundant in the reed substrate, while you fi find most uh, small species in the more open water. And my results, they, uh, they support the theory that predators is a large, plays a large role in this, uh, in this pattern. And at last, I want to thank my supervisor, Anders Haribi, for guiding me through this project. I also like to thank my sister for helping with me with the layout of my presentation, poster and folder, and all my friends that have been very supportive. And I want to thank you for your attention. So, any questions?